sit, you can sit, believe me, believe me. If you're standing after it's over, I'll feel much better, trust me. I did, uh, when they first announced the commencement speaker, Charlotte McDaniel came to visit me, as all you do. Every one of you, I know each and every one of you, 118 kids. And so, if we really want to get into stories, I can probably do a story on each and every one of you. <laughs> Charlotte came to visit me, Mr. Deal, whatever you do, we know how you are. I said, what do you mean you know how I am? She says, you're emotional. I said, I do get a little emotional, I do. She said, whatever you do, Mr. Deal, do not get emotional because we'll all start getting emotional too. You know what, emotions are all right, it's okay. <laughs> I believe in those things. Feel good about who you are. Feel good about this day. Feel good about having your parents here. It's okay. It's okay to feel good who you are. Anyway, let me get to the speech. <laughs> when Mr. Gr he did, he's right, I'd probably go off cuff. But anyway, uh, it's like when the players used to say, I'd say one more play, each player would look and say, oh, we got 10 more. <laughs> when Mr. Griffith asked me to speak at commencement, my first thought was, why me? He asked me if I remembered Bob Grandizio's speech in 1990, before he defected to Kiski. <laughs> Bob started his speech with, first of all, a little joke about Swissvale, where he was from. And then he said, the only reason they picked me is because I didn't know that what the word honorarium meant. <laughs> Mr. Griffith explained to me that today there'd still be no honorarium. <laughs> Then he said, which I really felt good about, in the year of the pandemic, don't worry about it. We're probably going to have to change graduation day. We're probably going to be limited in the people we can bring. And there won't be that many people in the stands anyway. <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what. And then he said, finish it up with, you'll do. We're a little bit limited, but you'll do. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Grandizio returned to Shadyside in that time. I graciously accepted this speech, and I said, Mr. Grandizio returned to Shadyside in spite of the honorarium. He finished his career in the right place. What a great friend and mentor he was to me. Have a passion, find a mentor. Have a passion, find a mentor. Find somebody that you trust, you believe, you can role model after, and you can look up to. Find a mentor. He was the best. Reverend Johnson, Miss Lang, Mr. Griffith, Mr. Kamen, Miss Sabadeo, Miss Nixon, Dr. Asmonga, and Mr. Davies, I'm honored to deliver the commencement speech for the class of 2021. I've been fortunate to work with the most incredible group of teachers, coaches, students, parents, and friends for 39 years. Friends and colleagues have supported me, supported me for all of these years, and I thank them. I'd like to dedicate this talk to one special teacher who passed away this year, Miss Angela Irvin. Angela embodied everything that is special about Shadyside Academy. She was brilliant, kind, and a caring English teacher. The impact she had on her students, department members, and faculty should never be forgotten. I'd like to talk a little bit also about my life at Shadyside, how Shadyside helped us. My wife, Cheryl, and I arrived 39 years ago from Gastonia, North Carolina, where we've been teaching for five years. You see, for us, this was a stepping stone. We were both from, she was from outside Boston, I was from a small town in upstate New York. We were gonna head back, a little five-year commitment, and move back closer to home. Of course, this place was so beautiful. We were awestruck. We fell in love with the quiet, gentle nature of this place. We explored the fields and the streams. And I pictured myself right here on this field, field of dreams, where I could conquer the world coaching football. Slowly, Shadyside became our home. We started a family, worked hard, and never left. 39 years later, we're probably proud and happy to call Shadyside our home. We have three wonderful boys, David, Brian, and Jason. 
and they were fortunate to grow up here and benefit from all that a Shady Side education has to offer. They personify Shady Side's mission. Think expansively, act ethically, and lead responsibly. They're all happily moving along in their lives and have families of their own. They have given us four little grandchildren, poor Mrs. Deal, all boys again, <laughs> to shamelessly spoil. We have many blessings in a large part due to Shady Side Academy. Now, the important part, to the class of 2021. So here you are, you made it, through this difficult year, through many years, and countless hours of hard work. Your teachers supported you, your parents supported you. And now we have arrived at this glorious moment of joy and celebration. You adapted, you persevered, you met all the challenges of a year and a half of functioning in a relentless pandemic. And you did it with kindness, grace, and a deep caring for others, including your teachers and your parents. I remember back to September when we all with much trepidation started the school year with in-person learning under the leadership of Mr. Griffith. Teachers, administrators, support staff, METS, the building and grounds people spent hours meeting and planning to set up the safety protocols. We were meticulous with every detail, but the one thing we couldn't control was you. We didn't know if you would grasp the gravity of the situation. Well, I'm happy to say the year progressed, weeks went by, months went by, very few cases of COVID in our school. You, you, you were all amazing. You were amazing. You're tremendous. You have no idea how good you were. Trust me, because I know about that, okay? <laughs> I've seen that. You did this, you, 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 did, you wore your mask, you did the safety app, God bless that thing, temperature screening, <laughs> you were respectful of your teachers, especially the veteran teachers who were a little at greater risk. And we made it here for our in-person graduation. Now I wanna give you three bits of guidance to consider as you move through life. My oldest son, Dave, went to Kenyon College. Katie, you're gonna love it. And when he graduated, we were fortunate to be present for the commencement speech by given by David Foster Wallace entitled, This is Water. As we were listening, we realized that we were hearing something special. This is the other night. I'd like to read this excerpt from a speech, which was later made into a book. There are two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way. Morning, boys. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one looks over at the other and goes, what the hell is water? <laughs> David Foster Wallace goes on to explain that the point of the fish story is merely that the most obvious important realities are often the ones that are hardest to see and talk about. The fish are blind to the fact that the water is everything to them. They are operating on what Wallace calls an unconscious default system, one which tells them that they are the center of the universe. David Foster Wallace tells us to be conscious and aware, move away from the automatic default setting, and always make a conscious choice to get outside of its constraints. He asks the new graduates to be mindful, mindful of the life they will be living. Instead of immediately thinking how a situation affects you, think beyond it. Only then can you be free. Only then can your mind be free. The really, and this is a quote, the really important kind of freedom involves attention and awareness and discipline and being truly able to care about other people and sacrifice for them over and over in a myriad, petty, unsexy ways every day. Make a conscious decision to be aware and compassionate to others. Make a conscious decision to be aware and compassionate to others. My next point. Preparation and opportunity allows you to maximize your potential. Preparation and opportunity prepares you to maximize your potential. So students, please do me a favor tonight. Do me a favor. This is a big one. I know you can do this. When you're thinking in a nice, thoughtful moment, give your mom and dad a hug for me. For you. Thank them for sending you to Shadyside Academy. 
they cared for you enough to want the best for you. All parents, all parents want their children to maximize their potential. And that can only happen when preparation and opportunity meet. Shady Side's outstanding faculty prepared you with the fundamentals you're going to need for success on the next level. This school has provided you with the opportunities to develop your skills and test yourself against the best from around the world. Whew. E, I wouldn't want to go against Eve and my man. You're the best. In each opportunity, these opportunities develop your skills and test yourself. Each opportunity you have learned a little bit more about who you are, who you are as a person. Do not, I repeat, do not let someone else tell you who you should be. You figure it out. You need that. Now I'd like to talk about a difficult subject, failure. I'd like to read a quote and see if you know who it might be. I've failed many times in my life and career. And because of this, I've learned a lot. Instead of feeling defeated countless times, I've used it as fuel to drive me to work harder. So today, join me in accepting our failures. Let's use them to work even harder. Come on. Adam Lauer, where are you, man? Come on, you got it. You got it. He's a golfer. <laughs> Phil Mickelson. Phil Mickelson, two weeks, two weeks before he became Jack, just so you know, 50-year-old champion. <laughs> Uh, the oldest player to win a major golf championship. Of course, the message here is don't be afraid to fail. You may have heard this before, and most of you have probably already experienced. But what I have seen, what I have seen from you, what I have seen from each and every one of you, is your willingness to have faith and a fearlessness to participate. You have always had that. In chamber choir. In senior ensemble, there were 25 seniors who rehearsed consistently, not knowing if they would ever perform. 20 seniors who were in a fall play in a musical. Seven seniors participated in Science Olympia. 40 seniors were involved in student council, student government, club leadership, captains. And 104 of you participated, even though you didn't have to, in the athletic program. Not to mention your committee work, participation in student associates. We were so lucky. So, so lucky to have you. You had no idea. Students were unsure if any of the plans that were made in these meetings would ever come to fruition. You had faith and you were fearless. You had faith and you were fearless. You were faced with the possibility of failure. It was amazing what you accomplished given the limitations and the restrictions placed on you. Every year, I say, we will never replace this group of seniors. And every year, a new group of seniors comes in, and they're awesome. But in fact, I haven't been here for the 200, whatever Jack said I was. But I know this. You're the greatest class ever. You're the greatest class ever. You're going out with Mr. Deal. We are the greatest <laughs> class ever. Remember that. That's right. We're all together in this. 2021 will never be forgotten. It will never be forgotten. As you venture into this world, remain strong, make good decisions, continue to participate, and seek out positive relations. Find that mentor. And know that it is with grateful, right, this might be a hard one, and know that it is with grateful and full heart. I conclude my tenure as athletic director and begin a new chapter. Through all these years, it's been you, the students, who have driven me to work so hard. You've practiced, competed, studied, rehearsed, performed. You've won. You've lost. But you played. You played. And you played hard. And you did it with faith. And you were fearless. Keep that up. You are ones who made my job worthwhile. I thank you, and God bless.